Welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at another automatic field watch from Seiko. And it's the first watch I've had on the channel that is actually made in Japan. We're going to take a look at the SNK series' big brother, the SNZG. And more specifically, the blue SNZG 11J1. And I'm curious to see if it's really a worthy upgrade from the SNK series. The Seiko SNK field watches are some of the best selling watches on Amazon, let alone one of the best choices for an entry level automatic watch. Specifically, I'm talking about the SNK 803, 805, 807, and 809 field watches. This one here is the green SNK 805. While they are very popular, there are some legitimate complaints against them most of which are often overlooked due to its low cost. My personal number one complaint about the SNK is its size. In a world dominated by larger watches, a 37mm case is a little on the small side. But enter the 42mm Seiko SNZ-G series, or more specifically, the blue SNZ-G11. It, along with its brothers, the SNZ-G07, 09, 15, are larger versions of the SNK series. Although, there are a few other differences, but I will touch on the differences as we go. So let's start to look at the details of the SNZG. Now, as I said, this is the SNZG 11, but more specifically, it's the J1 model, which is actually made in Japan, which is compared to the K1 model, which I believe is made in Malaysia. Now, the case is a stainless steel, but with a matte bead blasted finish for most of it. The side of the case close to the lugs, as well as the underside of the case, are a polished stainless. Looking at the dial, for the SNZ G11, we see that it's a navy blue coloring with white accent. You can clearly see that the Seiko 5 logo is applied and has more of a silver coloring. Now, while the dials of the SNK and SNZG series have similar stylings, the layout is very different. While the SNK has more of a Flieger thing going on with the minute indicators as the primary focus of the dial, the SNZG is more traditional with 12 hour indicators and Arabic numerals, with accompanying 24 hours below that. Another difference is that the SNZG has a raised chapter ring with hour and minute indicators, and this creates a very nice two-layer effect to the dial, which for me is my second favorite thing about the dial. The hands are sword-shaped in white with loom. Typical of a Seiko 5, you can also see both day and date complications at the three o'clock position. Now at the bottom of the case, you can see that it has 100 meter water resistance, which is much better than the SNK's 30 meter water resistance. You can also see the Made in Japan moniker, which is specific for the J1 models. Now the rest of the case, as well as the finishing, is what you would expect from a Seiko at this price. It's good, but it's also rather simple. And at the three o'clock position, you have the crown, which to me is a huge improvement over the crown on the SNK, which is at the four o'clock position and is very tiny, very recessed, and very much a pain to use. For the SNZG, it's a much nicer size and much easier to manipulate. And just like most of the Seiko 5s, this watch is neither hand winding or hackable. Now, before we move on, I want to show you the loom, which is my favorite part of the watch. It is fantastic, especially for the price. Now, I thought the loom on the SNK is good, but the SNZG's a whole new level. I would say it's almost as good as some divers. Now, I don't have an SKX to compare it to, but here it is with a Citizen Pro Master. Now, back to the watch itself. It has an exhibition case back with both the front and back crystal being Seiko's Hardlux crystal. Beneath that, you have the heart of the watch, Seiko 7S36 movement. Now, this is technically different from the movement on the SNKs, 
which utilize a 7S26 movement. But for my own research, there is a very minor difference in performance and functionality, if any difference at all between the two. Some people even suggest that for the 7S36, they took the 7S26, added a couple useless jewels, and called it a day. But regardless of its origins, it's easy to say that it's a well-tested movement, as it was introduced in 1996. It has a standard 41-hour power reserve, and runs at 21,600 beats per hour. Now, as for accuracy for this specific watch, I was getting about plus 7 seconds a day, which I think is pretty good for out of the box. But like any automatic watch, your mileage may vary. The strap the SNZG11 comes with is a matching two-piece blue nylon. Now the strap is similar to the SNK's strap, but it's a little wider, a little thinner, and a little softer to the touch. It also has nylon loops at the end, rather than the metal buckles. It's comfortable, but not really anything special, but it should last you a while. And just like its smaller brothers, you can change out the field style straps to dress the watch up a little bit. The rich blue dial on this specific one really makes it flexible. As for the dimensions, it's 42 millimeters wide without the crown and 44 and a half width. Lug to lug is 49 with a thickness just under 12 millimeters. Strap width is 22, and it weighs about 85 grams. And of course, here's a complimentary wrist shot. The watch wears pretty well. As I said, my biggest issue with the SNK was its size. It wore nice, but it just looks small. So the SNZG really fixes that. It's a nice size. And the nylon straps are quite comfortable as well. All in all, I really like it. And I really like the larger blue dial that just pops off the wrist. And it's a very good height for an automatic. It's not as thin as, say, the Hamilton Khaki Mechanical, but it's a pretty good height. One quick note on the J1 and K1 models from these. Again, J1 refers to any Seiko made in Japan, and K1 refers to any Seiko made outside of Japan. Now on Seikos that have both J and K models, there is a perception that made in Japan models will automatically be better. But on most of their watches, especially those on the lower end, there really won't be any noticeable difference. But even with that, the J models usually do cost a little more. But if anything, having a Seiko made in Japan has more value to a collector than any real functional differences. So as for the price, you can usually find any of the SNZG field watch models for around $105 to $120, with the J models usually being about $10 to $20 more. Now before I had ever bought a Seiko SNK, I looked online at the SNZGs as well, but for most of the pictures they look pretty identical so I just brushed it off as a bigger version at almost twice the price. And I never really looked back. Eventually it took another deal from Mastrop in order for me to actually buy one of these, and I'm very much glad I did. A few months ago they had it for $99, and at that price I was still hesitant as I have other field watches. But I noticed that it was actually the Made in Japan J1 model for that price, and that I really couldn't resist. And it didn't take long to realize that I liked it a whole lot more than the SNK I had. It's easy to say that I recommend Seiko's SNZG field watches. It's not as much of a bargain as the SNK versions, but for a little over $100, you're getting a great automatic field watch. And if you're interested in automatic field watches, Seiko pretty much has the market cornered around this price. The only other automatic that I can think of is the Orient Defender, which Orient is also owned by Seiko. I also think the SNZGs hit a nice sweet spot in price. 
It's in between the inexpensive quartz field watches, as well as the SNKs, and the more expensive field watches, like the Hamilton Khaki Mechanical I reviewed. In fact, I would say that the Hamilton Khaki Mechanical would be the next logical upgrade from the SNZGs. I would also definitely say the SNZGs is a worthy upgrade from the SNKs. In fact, I would probably say don't even bother buying an SNK. If you can afford a little more, get the SNZG instead. For about $30 more, you're not just getting a bigger watch, you're getting a nicer dial, as I think the raised chapter ring adds a nice layer of complexity. You're also getting a much nicer loom, or rather a whole lot more loom, as well as you're getting a much durable, water-resistant watch, and a much less annoying crown. So, in short, if you're looking for an inexpensive automatic field watch, Seiko's pretty much the one you have to look at, and in the end it doesn't really matter which color you like, or even if you'd rather go with the smaller SNK. Either way, you're getting a great automatic field watch that will serve you many years to come. So let me know if you have experience with either of these watches in the comments. And thanks for watching, and as always, like, comment, and subscribe.